What's up, Internet? Don here from DonDoes30.com, bringing you a Kali Linux tutorial today. Not necessarily having to do with anything about hacking, but I've gotten a lot of questions on how to set up Kali Linux on a USB as a persistent drive, meaning that uh, right now if you have Linux on a USB or a live boot drive, um, when you shut down the computer or restart the computer, get back into Kali, you'll notice that all the changes that you've made are now gone. So setting up persistence on a USB drive helps with that. It actually saves your changes just like any hard drive or normal um, device would do in that situation. Now a couple of things. Let's uh, first start by going over how to get Kali on a USB. Okay. So first of all, if you haven't gotten Kali on a USB drive yet and you're not booting from that yet, um, follow along right now. You'll go to the Kali.org page and download your version of Kali, whether it's a 64-bit or 32-bit um, ISO image. So you could download it directly from the website or you could go get it from a torrent. Um, I, be honest with you, a couple of people have already asked me about how I feel about version 2.0 and I fucking hate it. It, uh, it really sucks. Um, I've had a lot of issues with terminals crashing. Uh, a lot of lags, a lot of different, it, it's very quirky right now and I'm waiting for the bugs to, to be fixed. So I'm personally using my old Kali Linux, but if you want to mess around with the new Kali and put it on a persistent drive, you can. Uh, this is directly from their website, but if you want to, you could try to Google Kali Linux 1.1.0 and see if the old image is out there. I'm pretty sure it is, so you could uh, still stick around with the old one. But anyway, so first uh, step is to download the ISO, if you haven't already. And what I use to install it to a USB drive is Win32 Disk Imager. It's just a simple piece of software that takes that image that you download and writes it to your USB drive to make it bootable. And how that works, um, obviously I'm not running Windows right now. I'm running Linux Mint which a lot of people ask me what's my other operating system outside of Kali. Well, it's Linux Mint. Um, I rarely use Windows at all, to be honest with you. Everything I do is uh, Linux-based. But when you run the Win32 Disk Imager on Windows, this is what you'll see. It's just a simple one-window uh, one screen. You'll select your USB device. For this example, it was F. Then you'll go to the folder. You'll select the Kali image that you download and then you'll write it to the USB. Now obviously I'm not going to do this for two reasons. One, it takes a long time to do and also I already have Kali written to a USB device and that's that USB device is the example that I'm going to be using today to make this USB persistent. Now what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and get back to the desktop here. I'm going to bring up a terminal now the difference between most Linux environments and this particular, um, or the difference between most Linux environments and Kali Linux is the fact that Kali Linux starts you as root, meaning you have full access to the system. But for me, for this Kali system, I'm starting out as just a normal user. So if I try to do something, like pull up Gparted, it's gonna say that I need root privileges. Now Gparted is what we're gonna be using to create the uh, the partition to uh, the partition on the USB drive to make it persistent. If you don't have it or if it doesn't come with your particular um, version of Linux, just apt-get install gparted. And again, it's probably going to ask me to sudo. Now sudo, what sudo means is it's acting as root. And that's really a big difference between how Kali Linux runs and how normal Linux runs is you need to put that in normal Linux to get root access. Or, what I'm going to do from now on, if you type in su and your password, it'll give you root access. So for this particular session, I have root access so I don't have to type in sudo every time, which is good. All right, so hopefully you have gparted or you just finished downloading gparted, so let's get to work making this persistent. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open gparted, and we're going to open it using the uh, USB device that I have in my system. Now I already have my Kali Linux USB in here and Gparted is going to pull up. Um, also, listen very, very closely. You cannot do this 
while you're running Kali Linux on the USB. So you have to have a separate Linux image or you have to have your USB, Kali Linux on your USB device and then also Kali Linux on maybe a DV, DVD or even another USB. The reason is is because when you load Kali Linux using the USB, it locks it, so this wouldn't be um, wouldn't be available as far as I know. Now this, I highly suggest you guys have at least a eight gigabyte USB drive, and the reason is because check this out, Kali Linux takes almost three gigabytes up. So if you have like a four gigabyte uh, USB drive, you're really not going to get much space for persistence, and you're going to run out of that pretty quickly. Um, for me, this is obviously an 8 gigabyte USB drive. And what we're going to do to make it persistent, we're going to go to the unallocated portion. That means this on your USB is not being used for anything. Right click it. We're going to create a new partition. Leave all the settings alone. You don't have to mess with any of these. You know, make sure it's zero and make sure the maximum size matches up so you're getting the maximum benefit of the unallocated space. It's going to be a primary partition with the um, extended four is fine. Uh, what you do want to change though is the label to persistence and if I'm typing a little slow today it's because I cut my finger open um, it's a whole story behind that but let's just say bitches be crazy alright uh, okay so we created our well we didn't necessarily create it yet but we have it allocated to uh, this partition now go up to edit and apply all operations. It's going to ask you if you're sure because it's going to apply the new partition and create that. And this should take just a couple of seconds and then we're going to get back into the terminal and create the script to finish up our persistence. Okay, so 10 seconds, not too bad. Uh, we could get out of Gparted now, uh, or actually just hold off for a second. Just want to double check our settings. We've got the partition. Remember this, DEV SDB3. Uh, that's going to be the persistent partition. And everything's looking good. We're looking good so far, so we'll get out of Gparted. I'm going to clear this shit. All right, time to make the persistence work. So we're going to first make a directory called mount my USB and let's go ahead and mount the device or our partition SDB3 to mount my USB okay so this mounts that partition to that particular folder if you have no idea what I'm talking about read a book and we're gonna echo union 2 so we're going to write our configuration file now, and we're just going to call it persistence.config. And then we could go ahead and unmount our, um, whoops, shit, what the hell is that? We go ahead and unmount our device. Perfect. Now, what uh, should happen when you log into or when you pull up Kali Linux next time? Um, See Kali Linux launch screen. Let's see if it has a picture. Here we go. Or oh, this is good enough. When you go into your um, when Kali Linux boots next time, choose the live USB persistence, and then try saving just a simple text file or something to your desktop, and then reboot your computer. Make sure it saves. But uh, those are the only steps you really need to creating a persistent USB drive. This does not create the encrypted persistence. Those are a lot more steps, and uh, realistically, I don't use it that much. If you have questions or if you want to actually do a live encrypted persistence, I'll probably make a video on that at some point. But just get used to the steps that we've taken um, to make the directory, to mount it, to write our persistence configuration file, and that's it. So uh, let me know in the comment section if you guys are having issues. But um, other than that, I will see you soon.